The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they, will re they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Today, Ash Wednesday, we enter an important, I would say a key liturgical season, a time of both reflecting but also looking forward. On the one hand, we are contemplating what Good Friday will be, but on the other hand, we know the Good Friday is not the end of the story. We know that God has the last word, not the powers of this world. On Easter, we will celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and the season of Lent is a time for us to prepare for that celebration. We are invited to examine our lives, rediscover who we are, and pray on who God calls us to be. We begin Lent with Ash Wednesday. This day is a reminder of our mortality, of our limited human nature. We receive a little smudge on our foreheads and we hear the words, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. These words and the action of placing a cross of ashes on our foreheads is a reminder that we are creatures, not the creator. And that smudge, that cross of ashes, it should drive us to look for the one who is the center, who is the Alpha and Omega. That smudge drives us to look toward the one who sacrificed his human life for us. I know that that smudge of ashes might seem outdated or even inconsequential, some might wonder why we still complete a rite that, uh, like this in our modern times. But when we feel the ashes being placed on our foreheads, when we look in the mirror later in the day and see them, we are reminded of our finiteness. And in the same manner, we are reminded of God as infinite and as God's love being infinite. In the Gospel passage from Matthew, Jesus warns us against false piety, doing the right things but for the wrong reasons. So traditional acts of Jewish piety included almsgiving, fasting, and prayer, and these were meant to be integral to one's relationship with God, 
not intended to be public demonstrations for kudos and praise. Today's gospel reading urges us to look at our religious practices and think about why we do them. But more importantly, today's gospel reminds us that our faith and the acts that we do based on our faith are based on the calling to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. And we hear from Joel that God is asking us to rend our hearts, not our clothes, to turn back to God, to quite literally have a heartfelt repentance. Normally, we would have said confession at the beginning of our service. But as you noticed, and as I mentioned earlier, that was not how we started today. And that's because on Ash Wednesday, we will have an, a deeper act of confession. And this is intended to cause us to consider who we are. We will stand individually yet corporately to repent of all we have done that we shouldn't have and all that we should have done but that we haven't. So as we come to the time of self-examination and confession, we know that, things, that these things can be difficult because it means really looking at ourselves, warts and all. This act causes us to come to our Lord with a penitent heart, as Joel tells us, to rend it in sorrow and grief for our sins and to offer all that we have done wrong up to God, and in offering our failings to ask and receive God's forgiveness. Then, as we look forward, we pray that God will give us strength to turn away from past wrongs and to be our help and guide us on the road ahead. Lent is a key time within the life of the faithful. Our focus changes. We look at ways in which to deepen our connections with God. We often think about Lent as being a time to give up something. Others look at Lent as a time to take up something new. Reading scripture, extra time for prayer, taking part of a Lenten study group, but regardless if we deny ourselves something or if we choose to add a discipline, the point is about having deliberate attention put on God, not on ourselves. Lent helps us to place the focus where it should be, within our relationship with God, in remembering the saving act of Jesus Christ looking toward our own lives and how we can grow, demonstrating the love of God through our words and actions. And in turn, this brings hope for the future, not only for us, for all those we encounter as well. Today is about focusing on and through the cross of Calvary to remind us of where we have been as we leave our old self behind and to show us the way forward through the death of Christ to live lives as people forgiven, redeemed, and sanctified. Today, we embark on our Lenten journey. May this season bring us closer to God and to our neighbors. Amen.